Join us every Wednesday for Refuel at noon for a time of prayer. See the Refuel schedule on our church website. The Healthy Temple Ministry will begin a Thirsty Thursday wellness program from May the 25th to July the 13th. This program will increase the knowledge of the participants in health-related activities, community programs that will support a healthy lifestyle, and resources that will improve the health and wellness of the community. E3 is collecting new stuffed animals to donate to kids with cancer. Donations may be dropped off at the church from June the 11th to June the 19th and placed in the receptacles outside the administrative office. Get ready for our annual Youth Day Blast. Parents, sign your child up for the week-long E3 activities beginning June the 19th and ending with the celebration of our annual Youth Day on June the 25th. You don't want your youth to miss out. Get them signed up and for more information, email mjbcyouthministry at gmail.com. Call it all youth. Join E3 on June 19th from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. to kick off Youth Week and learn about the history of Juneteenth as well as participate in the car wash to raise money for kids with disabilities. Looking for six weeks of continual academic enrichment, field trips, STEAM activities, Spanish, sports, Brazilian martial arts, and lots of fun? Look no further than the Christian School Summer Camp Program June the 20th through July the 28th, 2023. Camp ages preschool to third grade. Contact Principal Mina Pearson and Dr. Tracy Holloman for registration information. E3, chat and chew. Join us for a conversation on what it means to be enough. June the 21st, 6 p.m. to 8 p.m. For more information, email mjbcyouthministry at gmail.com. All youth are invited to kick it at the E3 Sneaker Ball, June the 23rd, 7 p.m. to 10.30 p.m. Wear your best pair of sneakers and semi-formal attire. RSVP required. Come and shop with the Women's Ministry on Saturday, July the 15th, 10 a.m. to 7 p.m. at the Clocksburg Premium Outlets. The cost is $35, which includes round-trip transportation, snack, and driver's tip. For more details, contact Sister Loveness Overton. The youth ministry is starting a mentoring program. We're seeking positive, forward, moving-minded adults to create bonds with our youth aging from 7 to 18. Virtual orientation is offered monthly. Please contact Janelle Lockley or Lady P for more information at mjbcyouthministry at gmail.com. E3 Worship Camp Summer 2023. The E3 Worship Camp will teach you how to plan worship services and learn music, choreography, songs to lead Joshua Generation services starting in September for the youth ages 4 to 11. Interested? Please scan the QR code on the flyer for more information. Throughout the week, we want you to stay connected with us by subscribing to our YouTube channel as well as Facebook and Instagram. May we all reimagine ministry work and the work of ministry. Until next time, have an amazing week. Lamentations chapter 3 verse 22 says, The steadfast love of the Lord never ceases. His mercies never come to an end, for they are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. I said they are new every morning. Great is his faithfulness. Oh, come on, Mount Jezreel. I know it's early, but can I remind you that the love of God, the mercies of God is new every single morning. Hallelujah. We come this morning not just celebrating fathers on this morning and the love of a father and a child, but we come celebrating 
our heavenly Father, the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the lover of our souls, the lifter of our heads, the reason that we are, hallelujah, we come this morning giving praise, giving glory, giving honor to our great God. Let us pray. Kind Father, we thank you. We praise you, God, and we bless you for this day. This is truly a day that we've never seen before and one we'll never see again. But while we are in this day, God, we are committed to give your name praise, to give your name glory, to give your name honor because, God, you are indeed worthy of it. The very fact that we are standing in this place right now is reason enough to open up our mouth and to give you praise, God because you've been so good better to us than we could ever be to ourselves God and so we thank you Lord God and Lord we can not invite you into a place that you already abided and so God what we will say is have your way move as you see fit from the pulpit to the pew God touch each and every person under the sound of my voice whatever it is that they came in need of God I pray Lord God that you will meet them at the point of need let something be sung let a prayer be prayed uh, uh, the word Lord God let something minister to them today that remind them God of your goodness that remind them God of your faithfulness that remind them God of your loving kindness towards us and God today we not only celebrate Lord God fathers God but we also celebrate freedom God and we thank you Lord God for the freedom that we have Lord God in you that we can freely worship and freely praise you God God, we love you, we praise you, and we bless you. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray and we give thanks and all God's children shout amen, amen, amen and thank God. Let us prepare our hearts to go higher in worship.
this is the day that the Lord has made. We ought to rejoice and be glad in it. And if you want to go higher, don't fool me now. You ought to just lift your hands and let the Lord know I want to go higher. so blessed of God to gather on this Lord's day. Let me take this moment and to the queens in the sanctuary, I need your assistance to help me celebrate all of the fathers on this day. Come on, ladies, help me celebrate. It's Father's Day. Y'all were a little delayed on that, ladies. We want to thank God for all the biological fathers, the godfathers, the father figures. We celebrate you on this day. Amen. Now let's thank God for the father of all fathers. His name is God, I pray. Amen. 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 And while we're talking about fathers, let me share with you Church, that we had a wonderful evening on yesterday as men's ministry had their Father's Day dinner with children and family. And it was just a great atmosphere, amazing evening of fellowship one with another. And just like ladies, you all had a wonderful time at your tea, we had a wonderful time uh, on last evening. Amen. Amen. A amen. Now stay tuned because there are going to be some other uh, fellowship opportunities uh, coming as we are preparing and all of this is pushing us towards 150 years as a church. Amen. A amen. Amen. So stay tuned. Stay tuned and make sure that if you weren't here last evening, if you weren't at the Women's Day Tea, uh, then you, you need to jump in in the next fellowship we have because we really have a ball. I don't know who told anyone that being a Christian means you can't have fun. Amen. Amen. I'd rather have fun with Christians. Amen. Amen. So I look forward to more evenings of Koyania. We received a thank you card from brother and sister Fleming and Marcia Carey in the passing of their son. We want to acknowledge that they sent that thank you card. As we prepare to kick off E3 week on tomorrow, parents, please make sure that you grab your child or children's t-shirts. They've been packaged. They've been labeled. They're ready for you to pick them up following this worship experience. But listen to me. Don't wear the t-shirt. These instructions have been given until Sunday. Amen. These t-shirts are for youth Sunday. So please don't come wearing them to the car wash or to any other UE3 festivity. They are for Sunday. Amen. Amen. Uh, the teddy bear collection that we have been doing with E3 for uh, those who are uh, sick, hospitalized, those youth, 
uh, that uh, we want to send these care packages to. Uh, I think we miss the interpretation of new. New means new. Not new to them, but new, new, new. And as we've looked through the teddy bears that have been collected, thank you for what you've given us, uh, but they're not new. All right. All right. So please make sure, uh, if you can this week, to flood the church with new teddy bears. Everybody has children. Know that they love Five Below and Target. That's, that's Target. Amen. Uh, run in there, grab a new teddy bear, and, and bring them to the church on tomorrow if you could. Following this worship experience, all fathers, grab your children and run to my right, your left, uh, to have your Father's Day picture taken at the backdrop over here, not the one in the vestibule. Uh, and the pictures will be pr printed immediately after your picture snaps. So you get to leave with your Father's Day picture on this day. Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, it's giving time. And God loves a. Let's try that again. It's giving time. And I almost thought I was at 10 o'clock for a second. I had to catch more services. All right. And God loves a. God loves a cheerful giver. God loves a cheerful giver. As we prepare our hands, hearts, and heads to give unto the Lord, there are five ways to which we can give. The first is going to our church's website, mountjezreel.com. The second is you can go to your banking institution and give by way of bill pay. The third way you can give is by Givelify on your mobile device. The, third, the fourth and fifth way is you can bring your gifts as many of us are preparing to do. You can drop your gifts off here at the church Monday through Friday from 8 to 4 or you can mail your gifts to 420 University Boulevard East. Silver Spring, Maryland, 20901. However you give, we want you to give not out of necessity or grudgingly because God loves us to give to him cheerfully because he's given so much to us when he really didn't have to and we didn't deserve it. Amen. Amen. So let's prepare our hands, hearts, and heads to give and let's stand all over the sanctuary you can stand in your confines of your home or your office or wherever you are just as long as you're not driving. You can stand and repeat after me our giving affirmation. I give because I love God. I give because I trust God. I give because I'm obedient to the word, the will, and the work of God. Father, we thank you now for this opportunity to give. We ask your blessings upon gift and giver, seed and sower, tithe and tither, offering and offerer. That it may be utilized for the upbuilding of your kingdom as we do ministry and missions through the Mount Jezreel Baptist Church. Being a beacon light that's set on a hill that cannot be hidden. In your son Jesus' name we pray and we ask it all and we thank you for everything. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our officers are coming, our ushers are going to lead us, and our music ministry is going to bless us. Epps, there's something breathing in these monitors.
keep us in perfect peace if we keep our minds stayed on you. Hallelujah. We bless your name, God. We thank you for your peace.
of my heart be acceptable in thy sight O Lord my strength and my redeemer in Jesus name Amen you may be seated in the presence of our God Beloved, here we are negotiating another Father's Day as a church congregation and community. I'm gratefully and extremely pleased to be among those who get to hear the resounding echo of daddy. And while I pondered this annual day in notion, this annual day in our nation and parts of the world, I could not help but think about the many persons, sons and daughters, even widows, who grieve on days like today because their father or husband is no longer with us humbles me to a great degree to be counted among those fathers who are yet alive and living and breathing among us. For this, I praise God. For those of us whose father has crossed over labor to reward, let me simply encourage you to be grateful for the fact that someone, a real human being, called a man, whether he was present or not, was responsible for your conception. And even if in no other notable way, God used to make life possible and a reality for you. This day strangely made me think of our sitting president. You know him, Mr. Joe Biden, who today surely must be experiencing pain that most of us can't imagine some of us experience ourselves. For those who don't know, let me tell you, President Biden in 1972 received a phone call that his wife and college sweetheart and their 13-month-old daughter had been killed in a car accident while on their way to purchase a Christmas tree. His two sons, Bo and Hunter, were both in the car and sustained serious injuries. Bo would later precede his father in death by brain cancer at the age of 46 years old. Forgive me, but I cannot help but think this must be a tough time of year for a man 
to have to be reminded of the enormous amount of pain and loss he has sustained, even if he has been elevated to the highest office in the United States of America. Nothing in my view can take the place of your own blood of your blood, bone of your bone. Children that brought you brought into the world, in actuality, it's really not supposed to be that way. Parents, ideally, should never have to stand or even sit over the lifeless remains of their fallen children. Kids are supposed to lay their parents into the grave. But sometimes the cards being dealt leave one with a bad hand. And you got to play with the ones you've been dealt. Well, I'm pretty sure most of us, if not all of us, are absolutely saddened by this short but true introduction to a sermon on this Father's Day. But I came to the primer as my eyes were drawn to the life of another father who experienced an even greater tragedy than President Joe Biden. In the annals of biblical history and in what is considered the oldest book of the Bible, we meet a gentleman whose circumstances are so grievous and shocking it becomes difficult to even imagine how anyone could remain sane and maintain their composure when tragedies of this magnitude occur. The Bible presents to us a kind of man who has amazed much and a parent, done a good job raising and taking care of children, and then in one amazing day, the bottom dropped out. Listen to the writer. The book named after himself, it's in Job chapter 1, beginning in verse number 13 where the Bible says one day Job's sons and daughters were feasting at the oldest brother's house. A messenger arrived at Job's home with this news, your, your, your oxen were plowing with the donkeys feeding beside them. When the Sabians raided us, they stole all the animals and killed all the farm hands. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was still speaking, another messenger arrived with news. The fire of God has fallen from heaven and burned up your sheep and all the shepherds. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. While he was speaking, a third messenger arrived with news. Three bands of Chaldean raiders have stolen your camels and killed your servants. I am the only one who escaped to tell you. And while he was speaking, another messenger arrived with his news. Your sons and your daughters were feasting in their oldest brother's home. Suddenly, a powerful wind swept in from the wilderness and hit the house on all sides, the house collapsed and all your children are dead. And I am the only one who escaped to tell you. Job, emphasis here in verse 20, stood up, tore his robe in grief, then shaved his head and fell to the ground and worshipped. For the time that is ours to share, I want to talk with this sermonic thrust in our minds, getting past your pain. Job, in the midst of all of this, his gruesome and turbulent circumstances, yet teaches us, child of God, how we too might be able to navigate and negotiate life's unfairness and still make it past our pain. First of all, if you haven't turned the satellite off on me. I, I have some things I want to share with you. The first thing this text is tailored to teach us is that if we're going to get past our pain first, Job was a confirmed witness. It's right here in the opening narrative. The Bible calls him a perfect and upright man. Job's character is confirmed from the very outset. He is a God fearing man. Everyone knew him because of that. He was blameless, perfect. And many often read this and think 
he is without fault. That isn't the case. This reality means he was a complete man according to the Hebrew text. Job feared, reverenced, and never stopped believing God. In the Hebrew, the matter of perfect, perfectness doesn't mean uh, that he was sinless, but it could mean that he sinned less. Because when you are a believer in God and know the love of God, that doesn't mean you will be sinless, but it ought to mean that you sin. Job's believing and balanced attitude is astonishing. He rightly understands his preceding prosperity as a blessing from God. He does not imagine he ever deserved God's blessing even though he recognized he was righteous. Read Job chapter 1 verse 1 and 5 because he knows he didn't deserve his Former blessings, he knows he hadn't done anything to specifically deserve his current suffering. He lets us know later on that man born of a woman is but of a few days and those days are full of trouble. He does not take his condition to be the measurement or the litmus test of God's fury. Consequently, he doesn't pretend to know why God blessed him with prosperity at one time and not another. Job is a criticism to the so-called prosperity gospel, which claims that those in right relationship with God are always blessed with prosperity. In fact, Job is exhibit number one that contradicts that kind of thinking. And I know your favorite preacher has told you you can call it and haul it, grab it and blab it, turn around and you'll get it. And because you love Lord and you pray the right prayers, you're going to have everything. God's going to give you a Maybach, a Mercedes, a, 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 a Mazda. God's going to give you a Bentley, a Bugatti, and a Benz. I, I know that you feel that God is just going to bless you because you're doing the right thing. But sometimes the prosperity of God is is not in how we think it ought to come. And Job is a contradiction to the prosperity gospel, but he's also a contradiction to the poverty gospel, which claims the opposite, that a right relationship with God implies a life of poverty. The idea that believers should intentionally emulate Job's loss is too far-fetched to appear even on the fringe of discussion. God might call us to give everything if we're doing so were necessary under circumstances to serve and follow him. But the Job, book of Job makes no suggestion that God inherently desires anyone to live in poverty. I just don't believe we serve a rich God that wants us to live broke. Because the reality is the stuff that we struggle with financially has nothing to do with God. It has everything to do with our immaturity when it comes to our stewardship. How do you think God's going to bless you when you can't even give to the God who blesses you? Whole nother sermon. I'm coming around the mountain when I come. Job makes no suggestion that God inherently desires anyone to live in poverty. Job's original prosperity was a genuine blessing of God. And the extreme poverty is a genuine calamity and misfortune. It is life. And we literally call it theodicy. Which literally means bad things do happen to good people. Yet in all of this, Job was aware of God, saw God's hand in his life, and never charged God with wrongdoing. This brother turned from evil and trusted God in everything which allowed God to trust him. Beloved, when you can trust God above all, God.
God can trust you in all. Preach, honey, you doing it. So no matter what happens, even if the bottom should drop out, or if the rug should get pulled from up under you, or when the wind gets knocked out of your sail, God is still God, and he is still good, and he still deserves all the glory. It's one thing to shout when you're on the mountain top, but beloved, I need persons who know God is still good even when you're in the valley. God is still good even when your children are acting a fool. God is still good even when your marriage seems like it's falling apart. God is still good even when you have to sit at the head of a casket. God is still good even when you're swimming in debt God is still good even when your back is up against the wall God is still good even with tears rolling down your face is there anybody in the building who just can give God glory cause whether I'm up or down whether I'm happy or sad whether in joy or sorrow God is still good God's still good So Job was a confirmed witness. He was a confirmed witness. Job was a confirmed witness. But also Job appears to be in this episode, watch this, comfortably weeping. Cannot overlook the fact that he goes into a period of mourning. That, that's what the Bible talks about. Verse 20 when it says he went and sat on sackcloth and ashes. Yes, this is the customary behavior of those who are morbidly hurting and suffering loss, as did this old man. But not Job. He doesn't hide in a secret closet. He doesn't take a stroll or walk around the corner. He doesn't even go on a long drive, he sits in the open and begins to weep. He doesn't appear to have a concern for who sees him. He isn't worried about being discovered. He, he's not ashamed of what he's doing or concerned about someone questioning his sexuality. He openly, candidly, transparently and unashamedly begins to weep. It's a clear picture of all of our human tendencies. Sometimes when we are deeply hurt, we just have to cry. and There is nothing that we can do about it. Crying doesn't mean we are trying to change it. It just means we are pained by it. Loss really hurts. It's, it's what I said last Sunday that I'll say again. It's why God strategically placed two pin-sized holes on the inner sockets of our eyes that are called tear ducts which are for crying and weeping and lamenting. Weeping is not just a human thing, it's a hurting thing. Job's losses are confirmed by his weeping and he appears unashamed and not embarrassed by it. Our human tendency is to hide our pain. When we are hurt, we tend to hide our faces. You don't believe me? Let me paint the picture for you. We wear dark sunglasses at funerals to mask our misery. We even teach little boys 
wrongly to be strong when they are hurting and experiencing pain. Yet this a grown man who demonstrates what it means to be comfortable with weeping. There is nothing wrong with exposing your pain. Now I'm not suggesting that we should purposely reveal pain to manipulate others. I'm not suggesting, I'm going to say it again, <laughs> that we should purposely reveal pain to manipulate others. Turn on the light switch of tears to get out of someone what you want them to do for you. But you still can be comfortable when your heart is hurting and your feelings have been hurt. And Job clearly is comfortable letting us know how he feels about his losses. His family and children have all fallen apart. His prosperity and possessions have been destroyed. His stock market has crashed and the coroner's report is not favorable. And Job makes no overtures to conceal his calamity. This brother is bleeding and seems to be able to do nothing about it but weep. But then down in his soul, he reveals to himself and to us, there is yet something that we can do. Finally, Job noticeably continues to worship. I would just say that sometimes, Weeping ought to lead to worshiping. In a situation, circumstances where there is one person who could have prevented it all, and that one person didn't do it. Yet Job makes his way before him to God's offers the sovereign Lord, the all-powerful one, and humbles himself in his presence in worship. What Job does is like going to the bank for a loan and being denied by the loan officer or president of the bank. Then realizing you've been denied, go back to the same bank, to the same loan officer or president just to tell them thank you. Job knows that in spite of what happens, that God is still God, no matter what happens. That God is still good, even when bad happens. That God is still great, whatever happens. And in the midst of it all, God is greatly to be praised. That, 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 that's why he conceded, when I came into the world, I didn't have nothing. And when I leave this world, I ain't taking nothing. The Lord giveth. Help your boy preach this morning. The Lord taketh away. Blessed be the name. I, I hear you. Of the Lord. This is a good line to reiterate. No matter what comes your way. Blessed be the name. Of the Lord. Even if I should lose my house or my job. Blessed be the name. Of the Lord. Even if God forbid I lose my wife and children. Job helps us to say. Blessed. Be the name of the Lord. If I should come terminally ill and lose my health, we still ought to say blessed. Be the name of the Lord. If friends should abandon me or my church should put me out, I resolve blessed. Be the name of the Lord. And all Job is doing is worshiping his God. He's shouting in the midst of sackcloth and ashes. And if I could use my imagination, I could, I could hear Job as he's closing this message to us. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. I 
am an heir of salvation. Purchased of God. Born of his spirit. And washed in his blood. I'm out of here, y'all. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior. That means in good times, praising my Savior. That means in bad times, praising my Savior. That means in sad time, praising my Savior. That means in joyful time, praising my Savior. All the day long, this is my story. You can get past your pain. Being a confirmed witness. Be comfortably weeping. Be comfortable at weeping. You can get past it if you continue to worship. Listen to me, child of God. Worship is medicine for the soul. Somebody, somebody saying, well, Pastor, I don't, I, don't, I don't know how to worship. Yes, you do. This is all you do. You lift your hands and you tell God how much he means to you. You tell him, God, I know I'm going through, but you're bigger than my circumstance. I know I'm hurting, but you are bigger than my hurt. In fact, you can handle my hurt. I, I'm, I'm going through God, but I know you will not leave me nor forsake me. God, I love you. Just imagine Job sitting down, recalling life, thinking about memories, and the common denominator, the thread that runs through it all, is God was still there. As we stand all over this sanctuary, this temple, this tabernacle, I don't know who you are, but if you're here and you don't have a relationship with the God of Job and Jameson, I want to introduce him to you. I, I want you to meet our Savior, the one who can comfort you and keep you at the same time, bless you and give you prosperity. So if that's you, my brother, my sister, come on, give your heart to Christ, your hand to this pastor. If you're watching in the social sanctuary, there's a link that's just been sent to you. There's a flyer that's up that has a QR code on it. All you gotta do is take a snapshot of that QR code, hover your camera on it, click the link, It'll direct you to our church's website, mountjezreel.com, where you can fill out the document. It'll come to us, and in 48 hours, we'll contact you. Blessed assurance. Blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste. Oh, what a foretaste. Come today. Salvation. salvation, purchase of God, purchase of God, born of the Spirit, born of His Spirit, washed in His blood, washed in His blood. Come on, lift your voice. This is my story. This is my story. If you're here today, come on, come on. This is my song. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day long. All the day long. Tell him this is my story. This is my song. This is my song. This is my song. Praising my Savior. Praising my Savior. All the day long. All the day long. Come on, this is my story. This is my 
God said amen. As we prepare to leave from this place, we've entered to worship, we exit to witness. Amen. There's a mandate that God has pressed upon us. And I want you to get in your spirit. I want us to own it as a church family. And it is our marching orders as we leave this place to share his story with other people. I want you to repeat after me that Mount Jezreel is a disciple-making congregation that loves God and loves people. Mount Jezreel is committed to the master, connected through ministry, and concerned about mankind. of our Lord and the sweet communion of his Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide with each and every one of us until we see him face to face in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit we say amen Mount Jezreel I love you and there's nothing you can do about it